Mr. Speaker, today I introduced the Guam Land Return Act of 2018. For decades, the people of Guam have worked to see their ancestral lands returned. In Congress, I have made returning land from the federal government to our territorial government of Guam and Guam families a top priority. Since 2003, I have secured return of more than 1,000 acres from the federal government to the people of Guam. My Guam Land Return Act of 2018 would reduce federal land ownership on Guam and return those lands to Gov Guam and ultimately our people. This important legislation builds upon the work of my predecessors, former Congressman Robert A. Underwood in particular. The Guam Land Return Act would authorize the General Services Administration to transfer federal land buildings, vehicles, and other heavy equipment designated as surplus to GovGuam at no cost to the taxpayers. This would provide another avenue for the federal government to compensate GovGuam for expenses that our territorial government is required to bear in serving migrants under the Compacts of Free Association known as Compact Impact. It would also ask federal agencies to return more federal land to GovGuam more quickly. The federal government must finally live up to its commitment to Guam and other affected U.S. jurisdictions with compact migrant residents. I continue working to secure full federal reimbursements for Gov Guam's costs in providing local services to compact migrants. Indeed, I have sponsored the Compact Impact Relief Act, H.R. 4761, this year. I have also championed legislation to reimburse GovGuam for compact impact at the mandatory 180 million annual level recommended by the Government Accountability Office. Transfers of valuable surplus federal property under my Guam Land Return Act provide yet another way to increase federal reimbursement to GovGuam for compact impact expenses. And these transfers of surplus property would occur at no cost to the federal government or the taxpayers. Our island of Guam hosts a substantial U.S. military presence and is a strategic forward-facing domestic military base in the important Asia-Pacific region. In January of 2011, the U.S. military made a commitment to the people of Guam to reduce federal land ownership and the military's footprint on Guam. Importantly, the commitment coincides with the buildup of American military personnel and base resources on Guam, part of the relocation of U.S. Marines from Okinawa, Japan. U.S. military and Defense Department leadership under the Trump administration have reaffirmed this net negative commitment to our people and to me personally. Since January of 2011, the Defense Department has returned approximately 686 acres to Gov Guam. My Guam Land Return Act holds the Defense Department accountable for meeting the net negative commitment in full. This legislation would require the Secretary of Defense to maintain a public inventory of all land parcels the Defense Department expects to ultimately transfer to Gov Guam under the net negative commitment. My legislation outlines 17 specific federal land parcels, totaling 476 acres that should be transferred to Gov Guam. The Guam Land Reform Act would also provide a public mechanism for the governor of Guam to petition the Defense Department to consider transferring additional land parcels to Gov Guam under the net negative commitment. And lastly, my legislation includes several provisions relating to current informal federal land on Guam. Two provisions ensure that no cost transfers of surplus federal land and other valuable property do not create additional liabilities or public safety concerns for the federal government relating to environmental cleanup or flight paths for air traffic control. One section removes an antiquated federal restriction on 927 acres on Guam's Cabras Island which GovGuam has owned since 1981. 
The people of Guam are patriotic Americans and support our military service members and their families and the nation's veterans. And at the same time, the people of Guam want to see their ancestral lands returned, and rightfully so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back.